Hey, John here. Let's talk about how memory is stored in a machine and this idea, this concept called Endianness. First, let's make sure we understand what we're looking at here. These are some notes I've been calling together on how to write assembly language programs for RISC-V machines. If you want, you can get your own copy of this document by going to Google and searching for RVALP. That's what I call my project. And you can find a link to my GitHub page here if it doesn't happen to come up first. I'm sure it'll be near the top. Uh, click on re uh, releases, rather, scroll down, grab the latest, greatest one underneath assets. You can click on this right here and get your own PDF of this book. It's a work in progress. If you find that you want to help me out with this or I did something wrong, please let me know. Join in the discussion on GitHub here. I'd be glad to bring on any kind of contributions you'd like to be involved with. Don't worry about editing code and submitting. Even if you just say, hey, this sentence looks wrong, let me know. More than happy to uh, hear any critical comments about this thing. Anyway, let's look at main memory storage. Okay, so what's the whole point? Well, most machines, most computers today organize memory in a certain way. And they're all the same. They all have uh, what you could call a giant array of 8-bit values. Each one of these values is a byte, and they're numbered from 0 to some large number. Like the PC on your desk might have, you know, 32 gigs of memory or something like that. So that's a huge amount of bytes, right? And they're all numbered, 0 up to 32 billion. What is this from the perspective of a programmer, all right? So that's what this section of this uh, uh, text is about. First, let's make sure we know what a dump is. A memory dump is a listing of all these bytes, one at a time, in order, for each address, each index of these bytes in this giant array of memory bytes is referred to as its address, okay? In an array, each element has an index number. In memory, those indices are called addresses. The address is given on the left margin over here. So this is address 2600 in hex. All this is hex. It's rare to see memory dumps in other forms. All you can, but more often than not, they're all in hex. So this is address 2600. Its value is 93 in hex, 2601. The next byte is 05 in hex, and so on. Eventually, we see a 1301, an FF right here. What's the address of this FF? Well, it's 2620, 2621, 2622, 2623 in hex is the address of this FF. All right. Now, it's very customary on the right margin over here to see a list of values. A lot of times there'll be dots and sometimes you'll see letters and stuff in here and you'll see asterisks on the left and right or sometimes there's just you know a rectangle without any asterisks on it or sometimes they might use the pipe character instead of the asterisk. Nonetheless, this is an incredibly common format for memory dumps. All hex on the left. With the addresses over here and the values of these bytes to help you find things are printed in the character set of the machine. So most machines these days use ASCII. If you're on a mainframe, it would be absidic, uh, but their dumps look very much like this. Sometimes they're wider because they're traditionally printed out on that wide green bar paper so they can actually put more bytes per line than you can normally fit on a regular screen. But nonetheless, it's formatted in very much the same way. You can actually see some text right here, V-A-L, or more accurately, V-A-L equals right here. Well, this is there to help you if you're looking for something in a dump and there happens to be a text message in there. It's really difficult for you to spot the letter V, the letter A, and the letter L, and the equal sign. Those are the codes for these letters over here. All right. It turns out this is a dump of a program that has a string, a C string, you might call it today, that has VAL equals in it. And this right here is a null terminator. Okay. So you know how to read this. You understand these are all hacks. If there's 
any hex values that happen to be printable characters, you'll see them over here on the right. Any character that's not printable, like the null character, does not have you know, an, a glyph, they say, uh, a character, an image to be portrayed. So we replace this 0, 0, or the last two zero zeros with these two dots. So if it's not printed at all, they put a dot in here. These ones here that are spaces are probably the character codes for spaces. In fact, I happen to know a 2, 0 in hex is a space. A 4, 1 over here is a capital A, so you see that A right there. And there's another space right there. Now, are these used as spaces and capital A's and things like that in terms of the data? Who knows? It's very unlikely, but it doesn't rule it out, right? It turns out this VAL equals most likely is a character string used in the program that this thing represents, but it does not mandate that that is so. It can be purely coincidental that this number here, 76616C3D in hex, just coincidentally happens to spell something. This happens all the time. Don't be confused by that, okay? So this is what a dump looks like from the perspective, from the, from the eyes of one programming a computer. This is kind of the way most programmers would think about the memory in the machine, all right? An array of bytes that have addresses that go from zero up to some large number. Now, from the perspective of the CPU, memory might look very different, but in terms of writing code for it, from the architectural view, this is a very common way of, of seeing things, all right? From the organizational view, which is the view, you know, that the hardware has from the, you know, atoms and transistors and gates upward, you, the, the, the CPU might consider things a little bit differently, all right? All right, so what is the subject of ND in this? Okay, now we start talking a little bit more about what the CPU is doing. Now, remember, that if you have a, a, a multi-byte value stored in memory, okay? Like, let's say I have a variable that is represented by a two-byte value. I got a 9305 for the hexadecimal codes that represent the value of the two bytes that comprise together might represent, say, an integer or something, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. That's uh, If it was a two's complement signed binary number, this would be a negative value, right? Because the high order bit hiding in that hexadecimal nine, it would be set, right? Well, yes and maybe no. It depends how the CPU looks at the memory. If I told the CPU to go on there and fetch a 16-bit value out of memory, what would it do? Would it grab a 9305 or would it grab a 0593? Which end of this multi-byte value is the most significant byte? That's the question, all right? Now, if you're familiar with machines like uh, the IBM mainframe or maybe the 68K family or a Spark CPU and so on, these machines natively operate in what we call big endian order, okay? And when we say big endian, what we're saying is if I ask the CPU to grab a 16-bit value, a two-byte value out of memory, and put it in a register or manipulate it in a mathematical equation or something, it would grab the hexadecimal value 9305 in the order that you see it in this dump, plain and simple. On the other hand, if you are uh, an Intel CPU, all right, running in the in the in the PC on your desk or a Mac or something like that, those operate in what's called little endian order, okay? And that means that the little end is the one that's up here, right? In big endian, this is the most significant byte of a multi-byte value. In a little endian machine, that is the least significant byte. Okay, so if I told the CPU to read a 16-bit value out of this memory location at 2600, and it happened to be one of the, P you know, in, in, you know, whatever, a Core i7 or something on a regular Intel PC or an AMD or something like that, what it, you would do is you would be loading 0593 into that register or variable or whatever, however you want to think about that, right? So on a little Indian machine, this is a positive number. 
0593 is positive. On a big endian machine, this is a negative number because 9305 is a negative number. Again, if it is a twos complement number. If it's an unsigned number, then obviously it would be positive in both cases. However, the byte order is the key here. All right, which end of the value is read first? So let's look down here. We got some examples down here. Um, in the listing 2.1, we were just looking at a big Indian CPU would recognize contents as well. If I wanted to read an 8-bit value out of memory from address number 2658, or a 16-bit value from 2658, or a 32-bit value, all from the same address. There's nothing illegal about that. I can either read one byte, two bytes, four bytes, eight bytes. I can read however many bytes I want. I can instruct the CPU to load it as a character or a what a mainframe programmer might call a half word or a full word. Okay, There's nothing wrong with that. And all from the same address is the key, right? So let's look and see what's at 2658 in the memory dump over here. Well, here's 265. And there's an extra gap in here because there's 16 items per line. The gap helps you uh, conveniently find the 8th and 9 A and B addresses, right? So that's 2658, 2659, 265A, 265B. On a big Indian machine, I load one single byte, I should get a 76. On a big Indian machine, I gave a, a tell it to order uh, load a rather 16-bit value. That's two bytes. I should get a 7661. Four bytes should be a 76616C3D, as I describe in these examples here. All right, so what's the takeaway on here? On big Indian system, the bytes in the dump that you looked at just a second ago are in the same order that they would be used when they get loaded into a register or something inside the CPU. All right? on a little Indian machine, right? The other way around. Let's look at these same exact values from the same exact address, 2658. And as a reference, we know since this is big Indian, this is the order that the bytes are in the memory in the dump above at 2658 has this value, 2659 has this value right here and so on, all right? Just to get it all on the screen at the same time. Now, a little Indian machine, if you said, hey, go get an 8-bit value that is stored at 2658. Well, that's the same thing you'd get up here. There's nothing to reverse. It's only one byte. No confusion. All right. However, the two byte value that the big Indian grabbed at a 7661 is now a 6176 because the bytes are swapped or reversed. A 32 bit value on a big Indian machine is read in order 76, 61, 63, 3D. And on a little Endian machine, the little end ends up over here, right? So big Endian, the first byte goes on the big end. Little Endian, the first byte in at this address goes on the little end, all right? That's why the names work out this way. And if you look around, I think there's a note, a footnote in here somewhere. There you go. Grab this and go look at the references in here. There's some references on the controversy of you know whether or not big or little should work better or worse. And there's some references to like Gulliver's Travels, I guess. There's some discussion of people that eat eggs from the big end first versus the little end in Holy Wars and everything else. Anyway, uh, there's a little nod towards uh, Gulliver's Travel is the point there. All right, now... Uh, so what's the takeaway on little Indian machines? The bytes in the dump are in the backwards order, as you would think of them if you're going to load them into a register. All right. Now, what's the point? Why would you do this? Well, the narrative down here, we talk a little bit about the um, the fact that it actually makes sense to use little Indian. Think about it. If you grab an 8-bit value from this, starting at this address, and you get a 76 in hex, that 76 is located in what bit positions in that byte? Well, this 6 is in bits, we might call that bit 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? Those being the powers of 2 that represent the magnitudes of the columns, the bit positions, right? So the 7, 6 are in bits 
uh, positions zero through seven. All right. What if I read a 16-bit value from memory at this address? Well, the same 76 that is the first byte is the byte that actually is located at address 2658 is still located in bit positions 0 through 7. Bit positions 8 through 15 get the next byte. And if we read in a 32-bit value or a 4-byte word, again from the exact same address, the 76 is in bits position 0 through 7. 61 are in bit positions 8 through 15, just like it is up here. And the next two bits, bytes I should say, the, the resulting bits, continue in this, you know, what may seem backward, but I would argue consistent order. In a big Andean machine, the 76 is always the most significant byte. Therefore, when you read it as an 8-bit value, the 76 are in bit positions, you know, 0 through 7. Now, these bit positions are, arguably, in positions 8 through 15. Now, they are in bit positions, what, 20, uh, uh, 28 through 31, Okay. Now, if you're a mainframe programmer, you would at this point make an argument with me that IBM numbers their values the other way around. <laughs> and therefore, <laughs> the problem is solved. But, but I would go on to point out that just reversing the, 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 the numbering of the bits doesn't help anybody. In fact, it's very confusing that IBM does that. IBM refers to... My point is IBM generally refers to the most significant bit of any value as zero. That is not the power of two that represents the, you know, the face value of a one that might be in that position. Anyway, side note, <laughs> I don't want to go off on that deep end. The bottom line is that in little Indian machines, you look at the dump, the bytes are backwards, okay? And the result is that in a little Indian machine, no matter how I read this value, if I load in uh, uh, one, two, four, or eight bytes out of memory, starting at 2658, that 76 is the least significant byte, no matter how big the value is I might be reading on there, okay? In a little Endian machine. And in a big Endian machine, it's the most significant, no matter how much I read, okay? So that's what Endianness is all about. You can read all about that in Wikipedia and other pages. There's also other YouTube videos. There's all kinds of talk about Big Indian, Little Indian, and how it works. All right? So if this discussion and this narrative here doesn't work for you, go ahead and Google it. There'll probably be 100,000 hits. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you next time.